What is up, my Squirtleites? It is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Let's Play Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we did a bit of exploring around the Battle Frontier, grabbed all of the miscellaneous stuff that we could around here. We caught a Sudowoodo, we encountered Smeargle, grabbed some items, grabbed some battle points from Scott. I showed you guys um, the layout of the Frontier for the most part, and also showed you where the Move Tutors are at, the IV Checker, all that good stuff. There's a lot going on here in the Frontier. But now it's time to go over each of the individual facilities. And let's start with the one, the only one that you could, after defeating the Elite Four, jump right into immediately with no problem whatsoever, unless you just suck at battling. Um, or actually, I shouldn't even say that. Even if you're pretty good, this facility actually can be quite hard. So let's take a look at this sign. This is the Battle Factory. Seek out the toughest Pokemon. So you actually, if you jumped into any of the battle tents early on, have already encountered this facility in its minor form i suppose this is the battle swap area this is where you are going to get randomly selected rental pokemon and you are going to want to after every single battle swap out your pokemon with one of the pokemon that you fought against in doing so you will be gradually raising the power of your team because even if the moves don't look quite appe so appealing from the pokemon that you're swapping for their ivs and evs get stronger the more you swap them therefore they are objectively more powerful pokemon so, you want to continue to swap over and over as you get through each and every single challenge. Upon doing, uh, upon having, I believe, seven victories, you will then uh, be spat back out into the lobby and be able to start again. Once you have achieved 21 victories, you are going to battle against the Frontier Brain, which is, I believe, uh, who is it? It is Noland. That's right. Okay, so it's Noland. Now, the thing about Noland and game planning for him is that he does not have a set... Uh, set of Pokemon that he's going to use. He has rental Pokemon every bit the same that you do. But the thing is, is that his quote-unquote rental Pokemon can be legendary Pokemon. The only legendary Pokemon that are completely exempt from the Battle Frontier in general are Rayquaza, Kyogre, Groudon, and all of the event Pokemon. So Mew, um, let me think, Mew, Deoxys, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember them all, uh, Lugia, ho -Oh, Basically every event Pokemon, but you can use all of the Regis, you can use Latias, and you can use Latios. And I think that's it for legendaries that can be used here. So he can potentially have those, so you need to be ready for those. So the thing about swapping your Pokemon in and out is that you're going to want to make sure that you keep your team relatively balanced, or at least focused on a specific strategy, whether it's like a Rain team, or a Sunny Day team, or a Hail-based team, which those didn't really exist in Generation 3. Same as Sandstorm teams, but... You get what I mean. You want to keep a relatively good balance, but constantly be swapping. Now, you have a double battle option and a single battle option, both of which you can face Noland. Actually, this might be multi-battle, not double battle, now that I think about it. Is this double battle? Um, your guide to the battle side. Oh, it is the double. Okay, so yeah. So you have a single and a double battle option um, that you can go through. You can face Noland in either one. Um, you can... The thing is, is you don't need to do both. I will say that. You only need to get through either the double or the single. So if either one of them is your preference, focus specifically on that. Battle Noland once at 21 victories and you will get the silver symbol. Battle him again at 42. You will have the gold and you are done. This is also probably the best facility to farm battle points in um, and get them more reliably. Um, and I believe you get two battle points for every, I think, getting through the entire thing. I think it is which is a very small amount um, for seven victories, but that's just kind of the way it works here in the Battle Frontier. So that's the factory. Like I said, the only one that you can jump into immediately because the, the game gives you a team. You don't have to use your own team. Now we head on into the next area, which is the Battle Dome, your path to the Invincible Superstar. Now this is probably my favorite of all of them because just because of its format. This, battle, the Battle Dome is essentially a tournament format, okay? You are put into a bracket, and you have to fight a certain number of trainers to make it to the championship and win the bracket. Very simple, right? Well, not exactly. The thing about the Battle Dome, and you will only be fighting two Pokemon in each battle, so that is good. But the thing about the Battle Dome is that it is actually incredibly selective and very particular about how it works its way through tournaments. There's actually every number of factors on how, on who you will face and when you will face them and what sorts of moves they will use. The higher the EVs of the Pokemon that you go against, not only will the Pokemon be stronger, but the trainers will become smarter as you go through this place. On top of that, the Pokemon that you will go against, or the Pokemon that win in CPU versus CPU battles, or the teams that will win, are not randomly selected. They are actually chosen based on any number of factors. So, 
you will always be going up against the more difficult of the two opponents. Um, at least nine nine times out of ten. Sometimes there will be like the the factors of like the EV and the seating will come into play, and sometimes an upset will happen. But more often than not, they won't. So you will usually be facing harder and harder opponents as you go throughout. Once you have a certain number of victories, I want to say it's like twenty eight or something like that, but I can't remember the exact number of times. Um, but once you have a certain number of victories, your final challenge in one of the tournaments is going to be Tucker, who is the who is the Battle Dome Ace. Now, I already talked about his team in the last episode, which is the Swamp Rate Salamence and Charizard the first time you face him, but the Gold Symbol Challenge will be one of two of either Swampert, which this time will have Surf, Ice Beam, Earthquake, and Mirror Coat, as opposed to Counter, with a Leftovers, a Metagross with a Quick Claw that has Meteor Mash, Psychic, Earthquake, and Protect. That's going to be a doozy. And then, of course, the Coup de Gras, the Latios, with a Chesto Berry, with either Psychic, Calm Mind, or sorry, with Psychic Calm Mind, Thunderbolt, and Rest. Tucker is going to be no joke, and he, this is, in my opinion, not only one of the most fun, but also one of the hardest of all of the facilities that you're going to have to go across now, or come across. Now, as I said before um, in the last episode, sometimes you will only need one team to take on several different facilities or, or multiple different facilities. So this is one of the facilities where the same team that's going to get you through the battle tower will get you through this this place. You just have to have an extremely good, solid, ready-to-go team. So you're going to want... You, you want a well-rounded team that you're going to be able to take into every facility. Make sure that you have it ready for this one, for the battle tower, and then there we'll go over, I think... One other facility that you'll be able to use an all-around team for. You don't need that team, obviously, for the Battle Factory. We just went over that. Now, let's head on over to this one, which is the Battle Pike, which your well-rounded team will be just as good here. Now, the Battle Pike is another one that you can get okay, uh, get by okay with your basic team, but only to a certain extent. Um pretty much until you get to the silver challenge once you get past that you need a really good team to get through this place because the battle pike is well it's a game of chance let's just say that you will be walking through you'll be walking through certain doors and through each door will be any number of different events that you'll basically run into um and in fact let me actually get over bring up a list of every type of event that you can encounter as you go through each and one of every one of these doors so you will be faced with one of, like I said, any of eight challenges. One of them will just be a regular single battle. This is usually not a terribly difficult battle, but they will have three Pokemon that will wear you down as you go through because you have to go through a certain number of rooms to get to the end of this, and you cannot heal your Pokemon except for through certain random events. So you have this single battle that's going to wear down your Pokemon. You then have a, you can also have a double battle, which is two trainers with one Pokemon each. You can have a single battle that's much, much more difficult, but the reward for doing it, even though it's really freaking hard, is to have your entire team healed. You will also get a room that's S-shaped that will have wild Pokemon. This can have wild Survivor, Milotic, Dusclops, Electrode, Breloom, and Wobbuffet in this room. You can have a single NPC standing in the middle that will just spout some random thing, and this will be it. There will not be any sort of event. It'll just be some random dumb NPC, which that right there is being lucky. You can get a status effect. There will be a surprise like flash on your screen and say, oh no, you've been hit by a status effect. This will be either poison, freeze, paralysis, sleep, or burn, and it will inflict one or more of your party's Pokemon. This is the worst possible outcome, but it can happen. You can also uh, walk into a room where an NPC will have one or two of the player's Pokemon healed, or you can be really lucky and have all of them healed, and that will be it. That will be the entire room. So, yeah, all of these different things that you're going to be encountering as you go through this place, and like I said, it is a game of chance. Once you get through a certain number of rooms, you will be able to battle the Pike Queen, who is Lucy. The first time you battle her, she will have a Viper with a Quick Claw, Poison Fang, Crunch, Giga Drain, and Swagger. This is her signature Pokemon. She also, ha she also has a Shuckle with Toxic, Sandstorm, Protect, and Rest, and a Chestoberry. You can bet your butt this thing is here to just be a stall and be annoying. And then her other signature Pokemon, which is my Lotic, with Surf, Mirror Coat, Ice Beam, and Recover. Good luck getting past this thing. It also has a Leftovers. On the second time you fight her, she will still have her Surviper, but Poison Fang will be replaced with Sludge Bomb, and this time it will have a Focus Band instead of a Quick Claw. She will then have a Steelix with a Bright Powder with Earthquake, Screech, Rock, Slide, and Explosion. And then she will have a Gyarados with Return, Dragon Dance, Roar, and Rest. And a Chesto Berry to boot, just to wake it up for that one rest. In my opinion, this is the second easiest of all of, 
the facilities because it is a game of chance. Um, you're not actually really battling anything all that difficult in here. As long as you have a very solid team, you should be able to get through it fine. It really just comes down to if you're unlucky enough to come across status conditions a lot or the wild Pokemon room where you will be for sure encountering two to three Pokemon and you are not really guaranteed an escape because they are going to be the same level as you. But other than that, this is not too bad, and I do think that it has the easiest of the Frontier Heads, despite what I made them out to be. I think Lucy is the easiest of all of them to take down, aside from Nolan, again, because he just has completely random Pokemon. Okay, so let's head on down to the next one, which is on over this way. And this is the one that was over by the Sudowoodo, and this one is the Battle Palace. Keep your eyes on Pokemon Battles. Okay, so the Battle Palace is... In my opinion, the hardest of any of the facilities here in the Battle Frontier. The Battle Palace is where your Pokemon have to battle for you. We talked about that girl who tells you what your Pokemon tendencies are. You need to raise a specific team for the Battle Palace to understand how it works. And that will use Pokemon that will use specific moves that you need to win. Um, usually, the Pokemon that you're going against are every bit as intelligent as they are if they were just used by a random trainer. They're not going to typically stick to one type of move. They are... It's pretty much... You're just leaving your Pokemon to go up against uh, another trainer and hope that they select the right moves. And in doing this, like I said, you need to craft specific move sets that are geared around your Pokemon's nature to then utilize those move sets to their fullest. So again, like I said, you need a specific team for this place. You can try to use your specific team that you've used for the battle tower the battle dome and the battle pike etc but their nature might be off and they won't work for this place so <laughs> take the time craft a team that has a specific nature that you can then take to that girl and she'll tell you if they're an attack defense or support type and then build a move set around that make sure their ivs are good their evs are good all of those sorts of things and then eventually you are going to get to the palace maven spencer who at, at the first challenge is going to have a crowbat with fly confuse ray toxic double team and a bright powder a slay king with brick break shadow ball earthquake swagger and a scope lens and a lapras with horn drill ice beam confuse ray and protect good luck getting through that with your random pokemon you also have the second challenge which is even crazier which has arcanine with overheat and a white herb to boot extreme speed roar and protect the slay king once again except for this time has hyper beam shadow ball earthquake and yawn and then, oh boy, Suicune with Surf, Bite, Blizzard, Calm Mind, and a King's Rock. Just to flinch you all day while it's hitting you with these really powerful moves. Isn't that delightful? This is by far the hardest of any of the facilities, in my opinion. It's, it's like, like I said, you just need a completely specific team geared around it that completely throws every other notion you have about battling out the window. You just have to hope that things go well essentially and again with pokemon that you have specifically spent dozens and dozens of hours training it is not easy it is it it, it took me by far the longest to master this facility i think this one was like a one to two month project all on its own just to conquer it oh, oh my gosh i the horrors i have with that particular facility i just i can't even describe how much i hate that place and that facility is a good example of why the battle frontier in emerald is so much more fleshed out than other facilities and it's also part of the reason why most people don't beat the battle frontier because it's practically impossible okay so i think we've spent enough time talking about facilities in this episode we've still got three more to go over um which personally i like all of these none of them are as bad as the battle palace but they are still doozies in their own right, and I can't wait to talk about them. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so very much for watching this episode of Let's Play Pokemon Emerald. I hope you all enjoyed it very, very much, and I will see you all in the next one.